Hello Booktube! This is my review of The Decameron uh, by Giovanni Boccaccio, uh, originally composed in 1353 in Italian, and I'm reading the Wayne Rebhorn uh, translation uh, in 2013, so hey, this is a brand spanking new book as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is a story about uh, seven young women and three young men leaving, fleeing from uh, plague-ridden Florence, uh, and to the countryside to basically take shelter uh, from the Black Death, which Rebhorn does a good job of in his introduction of sort of telling you, wow, this was destroying society. This was crumbling sort of a lot of all this kind of a lot of the social structures, uh, the mores of the time, uh, the church, like everything was falling apart. You think things are falling apart now. Think about having a good hunk of the population dying. They're just not being enough enough people around to actually just do do the basic stuff and that's that's the that's the time that we're in um so um i there you know as translations go let's just start off with that because i think Reborn is obviously he's the he's the other star of the show uh for i don't i don't read italian and much less you know this this version of italian of uh, 1353 italian but he does a really good job of making a story that flows, uh, that does have variations. You can tell when it's kind of, there's very kind of earthy stories. This is a collection of stories. I'll get into that in a moment. Of, of you'll have, so there's multiple different voices, mul multiple different registers from the dirty joke to the high love love story to the kind of vir virtue, so much more in the earthy side, it seems, or maybe that's just what I respond to. Um, I'll actually link to a video of Rebhorn talking about his translation and talking about uh, Boccaccio as someone he likened to uh, like Henry James or Faulkner, at least in his um, uh, in the complexity of his prose style. Thankfully, I didn't get that chunky of a feel from from uh, the actual reading because it, it it was it was a fairly it was a clean read, and he did talk about how. He didn't, you know, Boccaccio could go on for big, long sentences, and he did break things up and reorder things to make it actually understandable to uh, boneheads and, you know, maybe just a, mo a modern a modern reader, a non-specialized public, because it's definitely a translation that I think you could just, you could pick up and read, which is indeed what I did. I should actually call out to Memento Mori and his Decameron, or Thanawan, or whatever it was, uh, that he started in August uh, which uh, I, of course, said, hey, I'll do that, and now it's December, the very end of December, and I'm actually just finishing, which is why I'm just doing a review of the Decameron, and I'm not linking myself to any of that, but just to call it, because that's what kind of gave me the uh, the impetus to do, to actually, to read this book, and to actually pick this translation, which I very much enjoyed, so thanks to him for that. So yeah, this is a story of these seven young uh, women and three young men heading into the countryside and telling each other stories, sort of telling each other stories to keep themselves out of trouble and also as a way of uh, entertaining themselves and perhaps also giving themselves a little bit of um, advice or or examples or stuff like that. It's not a didactic book. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, so 10 stories a day for over 10 days, done over two weeks because they take holy days off. And so there are days where they're just they're just chilling. And they're going to this very kind of beautiful, secluded, idealized, you know, this is like, ah, this is withdrawing into, into, into the country and it's in, in all its kind of romanticized glory of pulling yourself out from the world. Um, where, you know, each day they have sort of, most days they have a theme, uh, which in a general sense, because I'm not going to go through all 10 or stuff like fortune, love, wit, vice, virtue. Um, are touched upon in uh, kind of the themes of themes of the stories that uh, each of the characters things and there's a lot of kind of you can see a lot of different things there's like there's a lot of misogyny in this book there's also maybe proto-feminism I've heard it argued some places uh, there's definitely like kind of the up-and-comer kind of the nouveau riche versus the aristocracy there's uh, erotic lust versus uh, chivalry um, there's uh, a lot of satirizing of, of the church and of nuns and friars and freights and all those other religious types and just basically how corrupt and uh, shitty they could be. Um, and 
I find like, you know, in the, in the frame story is, is really is a big thing of this because within the frame story at the end of the beginning of stories, people will comment on the story they just heard and people will then the stories will comment on each other's stories or they'll add to each other's stories like, oh, I also remember a story about these goofy dudes and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, at the, at the very end of the book, uh, the author defends like, you know, OK, look, you know, hey. I didn't use any dirty words, you know, I, I use very good at using euphemisms. And the only times I did use dirty words is when the characters themselves were going to say those dirty words. But of course, you know, this isn't me writing this. This is just me recounting what happened. So, you know, back off. And just and just the fact that he says, like, you know, look, if you come to this in the right frame of mind, all these stories are perfectly have are perfectly seemly in utility. It's like if you want to read it as a dirty story, well, then that's on you. And there's very much this, uh, all the way through this, there's this interaction, uh, which I think uh, Boccaccio is also expecting the reader of this book to have, this interaction of arguing with the text of, um, of, of it's not, you're not supposed to, it, this isn't didactic, here I'm going to lay things out for you. This is, here is something, here is a man savagely beating his wife, and this being supposedly, that's the way you should treat treat your wife to have a good thing and like are you gonna take that and uh, some stories do and some stories have have women you know basically tricking their husbands or to get their own way to get their own and there's very much an acknowledgement of female sexuality in this book at the same time there's also a lot of there's a male lust but there's also a lot of rage and um, brutality sometimes um, told in the form of a joke where everyone's laughing at the end that this woman got beaten the shit out of, and it's like, uh, yeah, you, you're quite, you're horrified by it, and um, yeah, so I, I, it, it's a book that's definitely in conversation, uh, and uh, very much the sort of the whole, the whole setting, this idealized setting of of the villa and the and the beautiful gardens and and all that they go to. It's it, there's there's a sense of here's reading, here's storytelling as a way of taking a step back and experiencing, experiencing all these different ways of looking at the world, of, of, of interacting with the world. And um, we're going to go back into the world again. We're going to put the book, I'm going to put the book back down and I'm going to go into the world. Uh, and, uh, but this is a place, this, this storytelling place is a place to, to suck that stuff up. And it's interestingly that it's, it's a group of people. Uh, this is, uh, we, we've interestingly, I feel like we've gone through stages of, 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 uh, reading where you can see from the earliest stages of, of, of experiencing stories. It was a communal thing. It was the, the campfire and people telling stories to each other and the whole audience thing. And even in the medieval times, I believe there was the whole thing of, of, uh, you know, you, you would read something, but you would read it aloud to every for everyone else to hear because not as many people knew how to knew how to uh, read, and it was still a very public thing. And we've we've had a period where it's like okay, the solitary reader of of reading reading on your own and experiencing on your own. And now we're in we're in BookTube, our very own uh, our own retreat from the uh, the black plague that rages all around us uh, always has, but uh, we're in conversation. We're in a con we're in a conversation with each other now on BookTube, which is uh, maybe this idealized garden. Still a lot of misogyny, still a lot of violence, um, maybe a little less chivalry, which is probably a good thing, you know. Uh, hopefully less aristocracy, but uh, well, of course we have the royalty of BookTube. You know, un momento mori, Steve reads uh, insert literary, literary literary pun pun here. We've we've got all our royalty and probably many others that I have no clue about. Uh, this is just my own little. My own little hierarchy of hierarchy of all. So um, yeah, I haven't really talked about individual stories, but I, I, in some ways, I think that's that's both the point. You you enjoy the stories, the uh, the ridiculous uh, the ridiculous joke stories of uh, of of um, you know. It's funny, I, you know, bad on me. I, what do I remember? I remember the dirty jokes. The the woman who. The, who goes to the monk and gets uh, hell put in, really enjoys getting, uh, what is it, the devil put in hell and uh, goes off to find more. I don't know if I got that right, but it's just like, it's like, this is like penthouse, 
joke humor, which, you know, that's, that's fine. So <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I remember. I, the chivalry, the, the, oh, sometimes I kind of think I rolled my eyes at the sort of stuff where it's like, oh, they're, 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 um, they're, oh, see, that's behind the camera, but never mind. Um, the, 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 the stories of like, you know, people falling in love and then dying because their love is not done. And I, 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 I you know, you connect a lot less with that. Um, or I connected a lot less with that. So it's interesting that Boccaccio has probably become dirtier as we've gone along because a lot of the chivalry stuff, chivalry is dead. And hooray for, and long may chivalry die, uh, or something like that. But yeah, so that's that's a, my part of the conversation. Um, uh, and I look forward to hearing about everybody else's part of the conversation because I'm going to go back to that uh, thread and go through the various people's reactions, much more thorough reactions to uh, Boccaccio as it went along. So, uh, yeah, that's my review of uh, Boccaccio. More videos later.